Can I say firstly that I am so very honoured to have the opportunity to say a few words on behalf of the McGuinness clan. Can I start by saying to Bernie, to Fekra, to Fernula, to Grania, to the grandchildren, to the brothers, to Darlene his sister, that we're so very proud to be here with you today as we unveil this portrait. It's indeed each and every one of our honour to be here. A huge, huge thank you to the many, many people that have travelled to be here from all walks of life, from political life, from the sporting community, from voluntary, from churches, civic life, life and people who have worked with Martin down through the years. I think that he would be more than pleased to take a look around him today to see that all of you have come along to join with his family on a day which is obviously a day for them which is full of mixed emotions. Because for anybody that knew Martin would know that first and foremost, as David said, he was a family man. So to be here to support his family at this time is absolutely inspirational and thank you so much. It's with a broken heart but with a heart that's bursting with pride that we remember Martin one year on. He was our leader, but he was Bernie's husband. He was a father, a granddad, and a brother. We will never forget the sacrifices that his family have made down through many long and difficult years. Over this past year, the McGuinness family have symbolized Martin's legacy as they attended many events in his honor with great dignity and selflessness while grieving their own personal loss. I hope that you, his family, can take some comfort from the knowledge that Martin gave so much of his life, his time and his energy to make the lives of others better and to build a better future for all of our people. When you reflect on the scores of thousands of people who attended Martin's funeral, which showed an outpouring of love and solidarity and the very high esteem in which Martin McGuinness was held as an active, respected and humble political leader who in his lifetime made a huge difference to people's lives. Martin was an ordinary man. He was a leader. He was a leader in the transformation with others of this society as a result of the Irish peace process over the last 25 years. As Sinn Féin's chief negotiator, Martin took on a huge challenge and a responsibility to win the trust and support of the nationalist people and to successfully build a path to peace out of conflict and division. But one of Martin's greatest strengths was his recognition of the need to understand that we live in a society that has different views and different narratives of the past. He forged a reputation as a capable and outstanding political negotiator and a people first politician and a government minister. We saw his strong political caliber when both he and Ian Paisley entered joint office to restore power share and executive over a decade ago back in May 2007. Over those 10 years, in the role of Deputy First Minister, Martin sought, with all of his energy, with all of his determination, to serve all of the people of the North and the people of this island by making power share and government work. Throughout that time, Martin worked with Ian Paisley, with Peter Robinson and Arlene Foster as DUP First Ministers and I welcome the fact that they are here today or a representative of them are here today. At times he sought to exercise his responsibilities in good faith. At all times he sought to exercise his responsibilities in good faith and to seek resolutions rather than recrimination. He worked tirelessly and assertively to build our political process and to build our political institutions as the basis to advance the reconciliation of our community and to build a better future for our youth. As a true leader, he stretched and challenged his own supporters from within republicanism and nationalism in his determination to reach out with an open hand and friendship to our unionist neighbours to unite orange and green. Martin believed that the political institutions underpinning the Good Friday Agreement only have value if they enjoy the confidence and the support of the people they were established to serve. In his last public appeal, Martin urged people to choose hope over fear, to put equality and respect for all of our people at the heart of power sharing. And therein lies the challenge for each and every one of us. How do we create the conditions where all of our people choose hope over fear? How do we achieve reconciliation together? How do we build bridges between our communities together? How do we govern on the basis of equal partnership together? We need to turn a corner 
and we need to enter a new era together. Now Martin's portrait will hang so proudly in this building and he will watch over us as we seek to build that new future together. So when people ask, what is Martin McGuinness's legacy? I will tell them, it's one of leadership, it's one of integrity, it's one of generosity, and it's one of always choosing hope over fear. And we would all do well to be guided by that principle. Gormila Mayogov. I am a sailor, you're my first mate. We signed on together, we coupled our fate. Hold up our anchor, determined not to fail. For the heart's treasure, together we set sail. With no maps to guide us, we steered our own course. Rode out the storms when the winds were gale force. Sat out the dull drums in patience and hope. Working together, we learned how to cope. Life is an ocean, and love is a boat in troubled water that keeps us afloat. When we started the voyage, there was just me and you. Now gathered round us, we have our own crew. Together we're in this relationship. We built it with care to last the whole trip. Our true destination's not mine on any charts we're navigating to the shores of the heart life is an ocean and love is a boat in troubled water that keeps us afloat when we started Gathered round us, we have our own crew. Can I thank you, Carl? Well, that, that was, was uh, beautiful. Could, maybe again, could I ask you to show your appreciation for Carl? We now come to what is the most important part of the day, so I'm going to ask uh, Martin's wife Bernie to come forward along with the McGuinness family to officially unveil the portrait. Bernie.
this has been a wonderful event. Uh, it's, it's obviously an emotional event for all of us who knew Martin, and particularly for his family. But it's also one filled with pride uh, that there was a, a, a very lovely recognition from both the Speaker and from Michelle O'Neill as to Martin's contribution to politics here over 30, 40 years uh, and how he has helped create a better place for all of us uh, to live, to work, to try and build on that uh, degree of hope and optimism he brought to politics here. Uh, and so it's been a very moving tribute to him. Uh, we, we'll have the pleasure now every day of seeing Martin's portrait here, going up and saying hello to him as we pass. Uh, and so that, that's a degree of comfort for those of us who are left behind to carry on the work that he led so well from the front.